Secretary, you are welcome for this virtual meeting. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Makere University is under the Ministry of Education and our line ministry is the Ministry of Education. And Your Excellency, at this juncture, I want to happily introduce to you our Minister of Education, Honorable Mama Janet Kataha Museven, who is with us right here. Your Excellency, we want to acknowledge her invaluable support in the organization of this summit. We want to say with the organizing committee that she has guided so well and more especially at times when her guidance would come to us, sometime through the permanent secretary, Mr. Alex Kakoza, who's been the chair. Mama, thank you very much. And that's the way we have to go and Macquarie University will have to support all your uh, endeavors for promoting research, education, and providing health. Your Excellency, I now take this opportunity to invite the president, the international president uh, of the World Health Summit and Emirate Alliance, and this is Professor Charles Ivinjira. Professor Ivinjira. Thank you, MC. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, and the First Lady and Minister of Education and Sports, Mama Janet Kataha Museveni, I must say I'm extremely glad to welcome you to this very important meeting that is happening here in Uganda. I also would like to welcome all our dignitaries, all our invited guests, and all officials from the government of Uganda respecting all protocol. I take this honor to welcome all our guests. We have guests who are participating with us now virtually. They are not with us because of the COVID pandemic. And we have uh, a few guests who are here with us as we observe standard operating procedures for preventing COVID. So allow me again, single out a few ministers of health uh, from the African continent who have come. I think with us here we have our Honorable Minister of Health, uh, Ruth Jen, Honorable Ruth Jenna Cheng, and the Minister of Health for the Republic of, of Guinea. He has already been in, introduced, but he's here. We expect other ministers of health from the African continent to arrive in the country this evening and tomorrow to participate in this World Health Summit regional meeting. But at the same time, we have a number of health ministers from the African continent who are participating virtually because we plan to involve all of them and we have sent them uh, the Zoom link so they are participating with us. Uh, at this juncture also, uh, I would like to uh, introduce to you the president of the World Health Summit, Professor Alex Pri, and his wife uh, from uh, Charité Medical School, uh, Berlin, and the past international president from Iran, uh, Professor Ali Jafarian, is also here. I also welcome a big team in this situation from Makere University, which includes uh, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, uh, my principal at the College of Health Sciences. 
Your Excellency, I'm the international president of the World Health Summit, but formerly I've been the principal of Makerere University College of Health Sciences. I also welcome the scientists from the college and members of the World Health Summit Regional Meeting Secretariat, uh, members of the National Organizing Committee from various government ministries. Your Excellency, we worked with nearly all ministries and uh, also, as I already mentioned, we have local and international participants. As we open this meeting, there are people listening virtually and as we go into the meeting, still, uh, people will be participating virtually. Please kindly note that this is a special World Health Summit meeting for many reasons. First, it's the first and the only one of its kind happening on the African continent. It is happening in the most unique circumstances at the height of the second wave of COVID in Uganda. It will be in history as the only one attended by very few people physically. It is the first one under the New World Health Summit President, uh, <coughs> Professor uh, Pri. And it is the only one where the international president has held that position for two years. Your Excellency and dear invited guest participants and all involved, we are at the height of the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic in Uganda. And at this meeting, strictly, we, obs we observe the Ministry of Health COVID-19 SOPs and the national guidelines. And during our arrangement, I promise that we would adhere to those guidelines. This is why we are extremely few and keeping a social distance, even when all of us in this tent and around were tested, and many of us are actually immunized. Science has showed that COVID-19 is an airborne disease and can easily spread by air, but also there are for many as there and also there are many asymptomatic infected people hence as you talk i encourage all of us to keep your masks covering your nose and mouth avoid touching places and hand wash or sanitize when it is time to eat keep a very long distance from others and don't be caught of guard the M8 Alliance on this occasion wishes to pay tribute to all health workers who lost their lives in trying to care for COVID-19 patients worldwide. And we are in solidarity with those who continue to give the much needed care to COVID-19 patients worldwide. Equally, we applaud nations across the world for supporting health care teams as they struggle by providing much needed facilities, especially oxygen. M8 Alliance calls upon the world leaders to resolve the issues of equity of COVID-19 uh, vaccines to enable all the people of the world to be vaccinated, whether from the rich or poor countries. For us at M8 Alliance, we, we, we know that all lives do matter. The World Health Summit was started in 2009 in Berlin as a think tank in, the global, health, in global health to advise the leaders of the G7. It later went on to advise the G20 and it, and this occurs annu annually in Berlin and is prepared under the leadership of the M8 Alliance, a group of 30 top medical schools in the world and other 120 health science academies of which my university, Makerere, the College of Health Sciences is a member. The M8 Alliance Assembly decided to continue hosting the World Health Summit regional meetings annually, hosti hosted by one of the members supported by their government. Because at M8 Alliance, 
it is believed that health is a political choice. And therefore, the last seven World Health Summit regional meetings were hosted in all other continents where members of the M8 Alliance hail from. Uh, hosting this meeting was very, very competitive. But because Makere University, uh, because of its good credentials and being ranked top in the world medical schools, I think Your Excellency Makere ranks number two in Africa, but ranks number one in Africa because of research. And we rank less than 200 in the whole world as the top leading medical school. And therefore, because of that, but also because of the support of our government from inception, Your Excellency Makere University was able to win the bid to host the World Health Summit Regional Meeting, the eighth, well, the, the eighth meeting. So I want to pay special appreciation to the founders of M8 Alliance and the World Health Summit. This is Professor Detlev Ganten, who is now retired. He has been very passionate about the world, working together to improve health and well-being all over the world. There is nothing more important, and I will quote him, there is nothing more important than working for the health of individual people, especially those in need, but also for better health of all the people of the world. Health is an entry point directly related to all the 17 sustainable development goals, ranging from poverty and no hunger, to life below the water, and life on land to the partnership for their goals. Let us work together for this noble humanitarian cause. Health thrives on, on a healthy planet. Uh, end of quote. He steered the M8 Alliance, the World Health Summit from 2009 till early this year when he retired. He deserves a very big applause. Now we are under the leadership of Professor uh, Axel Pri uh, from Berlin, from Charité Medical School. And every year the M8 Alliance changes the position of the international presidency. This summit shall be mainly virtual, and as we speak, over a thousand participants have already registered to participate virtually. COVID-19 pandemic robbed many scientists and members of the Emirate Alliance and the international private sector the opportunity to come to Uganda. However, I want to urge the Emirate Alliance members uh, to continue working closely with Makere University and other members to push for better health of the world people and populations through science, research, innovation, advocacy and global partnerships. As the M8 Alliance, we shall continue working with governments, providing science-based evidence for better health policies across the world, but also producing the necessary human resources for health. I hope that this summit shall come up with formidable uh, resolutions to support health policies health policies across the, across the globe, especially from the six themes that include COVID-19, non-communicable diseases, global health security, the health of the African youth, and universal health coverage. Your Excellency, for our people here, the summit will enable our scientists to showcase the various research findings in their various fields of health and healthcare expertise, and also contribute to the global health knowledge and the outcomes and resolutions shall constitute the Kampala Accord for the World Health Summit Regional Meeting. Your Excellency and dear countrymen, our, all our participants, virtual and uh, uh, physical, as most of our people 
live longer due to many other factors, governments must have in place mechanisms of combating the emerging non-communicable diseases. This will ensure good health of the middle-aged members of the population and limit the impact of diabetes, cancer, heart diseases, mental health, and so on. We should continue to plan effectively to manage pandemics and epidemics to minimize their devastating impacts and global disruption on a very great scale in a very short time. We have vivid lessons through Ebola and the current COVID-19 that has caused untold uh, suffering. Your Excellency and dear participants, I urge governments to prioritize health and to build strong health systems supported by all sectors to take care of the populations. Health and disease have no borders. Therefore, there is a great need for countries of the world to work together based on a global perspective. The world should now work on the inequalities that have long existed between the rich and poor countries. The inequity, the inequity in the handling of COVID-19 vaccines is a shame to the world, breaking the ethical principles of distributive justice, which refers to equitable and appropriate distribution of healthcare resources determined by the justified norms that structure the terms of social cooperation. Therefore, it is not a question of considering problems in each country or community in isolation. However, we have to look at them in a global perspective, where globally uh, neighbors depending on each other Otherwise, our shared future will be much affected by health problems. Your Excellency and our beloved First Lady, please allow me to thank each and everyone who has contributed to the hosting of this summit. And my special thanks to our government for welcoming the idea in 2018 and supporting our bid through to this day when it would have been impossible to allow this meeting. I applaud our government, and specifically I applaud you, our beloved president, and the first lady for believing and supporting science. Special thanks to the former prime minister, Honare, the right honorable Dr. Wakana Rugunda, for calling the first National Organizing Committee meeting. I'm indebted and I'm sincerely indebted to Mama Janet Kataha Museveni, my mother minister of education and sports for being there for this summit. Thank you very, very much. Even when situations are extremely tough, the M8 Alliance is indebted to you and I beg that we give a standing ovation. Without her, this would not have happened. Please. <laughs> However, ma'am, I would like to assure you that we strictly adhered to the standard operating procedures as I promised. Makere University, I would like to thank our Vice Chancellor. I would like to thank the College of Health Sciences. I'm indebted to the Minister of Health and the whole team of the National Organizing uh, Committee, especially our Permanent Secretary, Mr. Alex Kakosa, uh, for chairing all our meetings and the guidance he provided since 2020. The Regional Meeting Secretariat, particularly uh, the head of the team. Also, I want to acknowledge Professor Maswa who worked with me side by side from 2018 to date. I also would like to appreciate the German ambassador to Uganda, the former ambassador and the current ambassador, and our ambassador in Germany. He has been a great link. 
I also want to appreciate the World Health Organization uh, representative in Uganda, the EU ambassador, the MA Alliance Assembly for giving Makerere two chances, uh, the World Health Summit Secretariat for the guidance, and Dr. Tedros for the mentorship and guidance he gave me. He motivated me to move forward and host this meeting. Uh, Professor Detlev for the passionate encouragement. Professor Irona of the Global Health Institute, Geneva, for the motherly love. All our funders, including the government of Uganda, Makere University, and the World Health Summit. Various committees, cha various committee chairs, and your excellence allow me single out a few and I would like to appreciate our chair of finance, Professor Tony Oyana, the principal of College of Computing. Dr. Bruce Chirenga, where are you? He was behind the science. Um, and all those involved. Uh, of course, because of COVID, we can't allow them to be here. I humbly applaud and appreciate all the speakers. This meeting will have 230 high-level speakers and experts in health, uh, including ministers of health from the African continent. Uh, also, the hotel. And lastly, special thanks to you, Mama, Janet Katam Seven. Let's give her again another ovation. She's a real mother. <laughs> Finally, I wish you good deliberations uh, that will continue, uh, that will contribute to the wa World Health Summit Kampala Accord. Please kindly keep the guard against COVID-19 and observe the Ministry of Health SOPs and the government guidelines. We don't want anyone of us to fall sick and this should happen to whoever is listening virtually. Uh, I said all this uh, because of what we believe in at Makerere as we build for the future and for God and my country. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Hivinjira. Your Excellency, Amongst us are also the representatives of different embassies. And we have Mr. Akbar Horamik, a representative of Iran Embassy, is right here with us. Uh, we also have Mr. Tadese Bisetenye, representative of Ethiopian Embassy. Uh, we also have Mr. Katoto Christian, representative of Republic Democratic du Congo. And then we also have Mr. Rojo Jerome and the bio representative of Nigerian Embassy. And finally, Mr. Santiago Juvenal Esono Bioko and Ms. Malagorosa Michelle Nchama, representatives of the Embassy of Equatorial Guinea. Uh, Your Excellency, I now take this single honor to invite uh, uh, Professor Axel R. Pruss. And uh, he's uh, the president of the Emirate Alliance and Dean Charité from Germany. Professor Axel. Your Excellency, Mr. President, First Lady, Excellencies, and uh, honorable guests and everyone who is devoted to promoting global health worldwide who may be following this digitally. We are living in a crisis and it's a global crisis. It's a crisis of health and health again is a universal right and necessity for a good life. And crises seem to highlight good things and more problematic things. 
and we already heard a number of very good things. But I would like to add more of those. The international scientific community has worked together during this crisis in a way which we didn't see for a very long time. And this was also very strong in the M8 alliance and led to the fact which Charles Ibingira just alluded to that he was and will be the only international president ever and probably hopefully forever who stayed there or had to stay there two years. And this was possible also by the courtesy of other people in this fam family of the World Health Summit and the M8 Alliance, making quite clear that a meeting in Uganda here in Kampala and by Makerere University is of extreme importance and must be held no matter what the environmental conditions are. So the international cooperation of scientists showed that a crisis can bring up good things in people and good solutions to very severe problems. But on the other hand, the crisis also shed a very strong light on deficiencies of our international interactions and on the mechanisms in international cooperation when you look at the distribution of vaccines all over the world. Coming from Germany, I must say that I feel it's a shame. I cannot really understand that in wealthy countries the discussion in the media is focusing on the question how much of the available vaccines can we secure for our own population. Our president said that no one is safe until everyone is safe. And I think that's something we all have to work for. We should learn from this crisis that we need better mechanisms to make sure that not only the viruses consider the world as one space, but also we consider the world as one space for people. And we have to go, I think, quite a way to achieve that. But on the other hand, a crisis like this, highlighting such deficiencies, give also the chance to address these deficiencies. And that's what this conference does. And therefore, I think it is extremely timely in this crisis that this conference is actually held just here in Uganda, in Africa. And that we will all try to come up with mechanisms and solutions for the problem which was so badly highlighted by the COVID crisis. It wouldn't be so relevant if, if it would be just one crisis, one virus, one uh, event which we just have to survive one way or the other and then every everything is like it was before. It is a chance to see problems which are around, which are lingering, which are there for a long time. And it's also a chance to see problems which may come in the future and to really work together to make the world a better place with respect to health at least, but hopefully also with respect to other items. And I'm very proud to present together with Charles the uh, M8 Alliance here because the M8 Alliance is a group which is built on trust, mutual trust, transparency, openness, scientific approach, and even friendship. 
And with that, I would like to end with, with a motto, let's work together for better global health. Thank you. So Professor Axel Dangeshon of Deutsch, thank you very much. And I think now we have to go to your excellency to Dr. Tedros uh, Adanom Gebreyesus. And then we shall be coming back to the Vice Chancellor because I can see he's waiting. And uh, he also wants to talk over there with you even though later there will be uh, um, a dis discussion. Now, our technology team, uh, can you take us to Dr. Uh, Gabriel Dr. Mayende? Mm -hmm. Can you unmute him? Uh. Hello, can you hear me, moderator? Uh, yes, we can hear you now loud and clear, Dr. Gabrisus. You're welcome. Thank you. To this World Health, thank you. Your Excellency, President Yori Kaguta Museveni, Your Excellency, First Lady Janet Kataha Museveni, your Excellency, Minister Jane Ruth Aken, Your Excellency, Minister Diosdado Vicente Milan, Professor Barnabas Nawenge, Vice Chancellor, Professor Charles Ibingira. As you said, I remember the discussions we had uh, in Berlin, actually, when this uh, World Health Summit was uh, planned. So thank you so much for steering this. And Professor Axel Price, President, World Health Summit and M8 Alliance. And our regional director, Dr. Moeti, staff of Makerere University, ambassadors, excellencies, distinguished guests, dear colleagues and friends. I would especially like to thank the Republic of Uganda and His Excellency the President for hosting this regional meeting of the World Health Summit and for the honor of inviting me to speak with you today. Globally, newly reported cases of COVID-19 have now declined for eight weeks in a row and deaths have declined for seven weeks in a row. While this is good news globally, new infections and deaths remain worryingly high. As you know, high-income countries have been able to vaccinate large portions of their populations and started to ease public health and social measures. Meanwhile, most low-income countries still do not have enough vaccine to cover their most vulnerable and at-risk populations, let alone the rest of their populations. We're facing, as a result, a two-track pandemic fueled by inequity, as Professor Axel said. This is a divide between the haves and the have-nots. Africa must not be left behind. Across the African continent, we're seeing an extremely worrying rise in COVID-19 cases and serious illness. The third wave is spreading quickly and hitting hard. The number of cases and deaths in Africa increased by almost 40% in the past week. And in some countries, the number of deaths tripled or quadrupled. The epidemic is resurging in 12 African countries and is rising in many others. 
driven by a mix of public fatigue, social mixing, ineffective use of public health and social measures, vaccine inequity, and the spread of new variants. The impacts of COVID-19 go beyond the disease itself, as you know. Nearly every country in our continent reports disruptions to essential health services. With the support of the access to COVID-19 tools, Accelerator and COVAX, 47 countries in the African continent have started vaccinating. However, the volumes of vaccines are nowhere near enough. So far, Africa has administered just over 45 million doses or 1.6% of the global total. And this is tragic. WHO through the COVAX Manufacturing Task Force and the ACT Accelerator Facilitation Council Vaccine Manufacturing Working Group is working day in and day out to urgently increase the production and equitable distribution of vaccines. WHO is also working with the African Union, Africa CDC, to establish the African Medicines Agency and to build a strong regulatory institution for Africa. More than anything else, the pandemic has demonstrated that health is not a luxury item or simply an outcome of development. It is a human right and a prerequisite for social and economic development and stability. Because progress on non-communicable diseases is also stalling, particularly in low-income countries, WHO is developing an implementation roadmap for 2023-2030 in support of the prevention and control of NCDs. A further challenge and opportunity comes from Africa's status as the world's youngest continent, with almost 60% of the population under the age of 25. It's therefore critical that young people be involved in shaping a healthy future. Investments in our young people's health and well-being is the foundation for peaceful and prosperous communities. Your Excellencies, in closing, let me leave you with three priority areas. First is vaccine equity, and that means sharing vaccines now and also investing in local production. If countries immediately share doses with COVAX and if manufacturers prioritize COVAX orders, we can vaccinate at least 10% of the population of every country by September and at least 40% by the end of the year. Dose sharing must happen immediately to fill an urgent supply gap. We need an additional 250 million doses by September. And with the 100 million in just in June and July, vaccine equity is the best way to control the pandemic and reboot the global economy. We also need the sharing of know-how, technology, and licenses, and the waiving of intellectual property rights. And Africa should support the waiver of intellectual property rights. The pandemic has demonstrated that Africa cannot rely solely on imports of vaccines from the rest of the world. We must build that capacity through local and regional manufacturing, not only for COVID-19 vaccines, but for other vaccines and medical products. Second, prevention. Vaccines alone will not end this pandemic. The same public health measures that have been the bedrock of the continental strategy must remain central to the response. It's through public health measures that Africa did better until recently. That means strengthened surveillance, increased testing, careful contact tracing, supported quarantine and compassionate care. And it means empowering and engaging communities to continue with the individual precautions that we know work physical distancing, avoiding crowds, wearing masks, cleaning hands, and opening windows. And third, preparedness. We must all learn the lessons the pandemic is teaching us 
and do everything we can to prepare for, prevent, detect, and respond rapidly to future epidemics and pandemics. There is no global health security without local health security. At the recent World Health Assembly, WHO member states agreed to hold a special session of the World Health Assembly in November to consider the proposal for a pandemic treaty. A treaty would foster improved sharing trust and accountability and help strengthen national, regional, and global capacities for global health security. We hope that such a treaty would have the support of African countries. Finally, let me add that at the core of all of our efforts to support countries is universal health coverage based on strong primary health care, which is the cornerstone of social, economic, and political stability. Your Excellency, again, President Museveni, thank you so much for blessing this meeting with your presence. Thank you so much for your leadership. Asante Sana, thank you. Uh, thank you my, very much, Dr. Tedros, all the way from Geneva in Switzerland, and we are happy to have you. Thank you for the opening remarks, and uh, we'll get back to you at the time when there will be a high-level discussion on vaccine equity between the rich and developing countries with His Excellency, the President. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, sometimes people call MC Master of Ceremony, but the reality is this is a mental case. And for that matter, I'm cutting down the program as will be. I now take this opportunity to invite uh, his ex uh, the German Ambassador, His Excellency, German Ambassador to Uganda, uh, Matthias Schauer, to give your remarks. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, Honorable Minister of Education and Sports, Honorable Ministers of Health, dear Vice-Chancellor of Makarere University, dear President of the World Health Summit, dear International President of the World Health Summit, dear Principal of the College of Health Sciences at Makarere University, dear Country Director of WHO, uh, honored guests, national and international, present here and online. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be able to speak to you here today. Our topic is health. And that's just about the most important topic there is, together with education. Because without health, you're not doing anything. Without education, you're not really going anywhere. I've observed that the older people get, the more they appreciate the fact how precious health is. It is a gift. It is something you cannot buy. We can only do our utmost to preserve it. Success and money very quickly become very unimportant when you are seriously ill. Concerning the pandemic, one thing has become very clear, and I pick up on what Professor Priest just said, if we are not able to defeat this virus globally, we will not defeat it. What does that mean? It means we need to join forces. ACTA and its COVAX facility are a decisive multilateral effort designed so that everyone in the world can have fair and equitable access to safe, affordable and effective vaccines therapeutics and diagnostics against COVID-19. Up until now, Germany has contributed 2.2 billion euros to these efforts. Distribution of life-saving vaccines is not ab about dispensing political favors or getting good publicity. It must be based solely on need. This is why by the end of this year, Germany will also have shared at least 30 million doses of vaccines with developing countries. 
We emphasize the latest announcements of the G7 to provide at least 2 billion vaccine doses, primarily through COVAX. Furthermore, Germany strongly supports international efforts to increase vaccine production in the global south, particularly on the African continent. The fight against the pandemic is not only about vaccines, but also about diagnostics, therapeutics, medical material and technical expertise. In this regard, Germany has sent ventilators, masks, test kits and medical and technical experts to particularly affected regions and countries, also to Uganda. In addition and beyond COVID-19, it is essential that we remain focused on strengthening health systems in general, just like the WHO Director General mentioned. Germany strongly supports the Global Action Plan on SDG3 and advocates for universal health co coverage. The momentum created by COVID-19 should not be lost, and together we need to step up relevant multilateral efforts for pandemic preparedness. This is also a chance to combat other diseases. We should make use of it. Germany sees WHO at the core of the global health architecture and supports the proposal for a pandemic treaty in order to build reliable and sustainable structures for pandemic preparedness and response in the future. Strengthening the WHO and the international health regulations must be at the core of this endeavor. I'd like to raise another point that this pandemic has shown us. Human health, animal health, and the environment are closely connected. If we neglect animal health and the environment, we will pay a price for that with our own health. We therefore appreciate the collaboration between the relevant UN bodies in this regard, as well as the establishment of the One Health high-level expert panel. Looking ahead, we need to learn from this challenge and focus now on what is essential by joining our efforts and promoting international cooperation and solidarity. Science, politics, private sector and civil society need to work together to ensure the best possible results. That has always been the aim of the World Health Summit. This multi-sectoral approach is more timely and relevant than ever before. I'm very happy to see that this regional World Health Summit is being hosted in an African country for the very first time ever. It is a great opportunity to share our knowledge and develop ideas for future supra-regional involvement and to strengthen the African role in global health. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, the German Ambassador to Uganda, Dang Eshun. And now, like I said, mental case is just three minutes. We are going to move now to Brazzaville, Your Excellency, and we are going to Moweti Machidiso. This is uh, uh, the World Health uh, Organization Regional Director. Um, now, Zoom people, can you take us to Brazzaville in a minute? If you are not ready, then uh, I'll become or radically change the program. Godfrey? Uh, sorry, so we've not been able to take a flight to uh, Brazzaville, your, your Excellency. Now we are coming to a point where now I take the single owner to invite uh, the Minister of Health, Dr. Jen Ruth Ching, to come and give her remarks. And thereafter, she will be inviting Mama Janet Kataham Seveni, our Minister of Education.
Dr. Jane Luther Chang, Honorable, you're welcome. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, and Mama, the First Lady and Minister for Education, the Director General of the World Health Organization, Honorable Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors and High Commissioners, the Director, African Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Vice Chancellor of Makere University, the Country Representative World Health Organization, the President M8 Alliance, the International President World Health Summit, the Executive President of Siemens, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I congratulate Makere University under the leadership of Mama, the First Lady and Minister for Education and Sports, and Uganda upon hosting the World Health Summit Regional Meeting 2021. This is a great opportunity for the world to focus on Africa's health, learn from its successes, and lay strategies for future collaborations. Since the first case of COVID-19 was reported in Uganda in March 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic has severely disrupted lives, transport, delivery of health services, and other government programs. Owing to its persistence, the pandemic now poses significant threats to the gains made in as far as improving health and socioeconomic development, largely due to prioritization of response efforts at the expense of pre-existing health challenges. Thankfully, through the guidelines developed by the government, we have been able to slow down the spread of the virus while ensuring that essential services and sectors continue uninterrupted. I would therefore like to thank His Excellency President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni for his visionary leadership and directives that forestalled the devastating impact of the pandemic here in Uganda. I equally thank the Director General WHO and the leadership whose support as well as that of other partners enabled the country to better cope with the pandemic. Key to the implementation of measures such as training health workers on infection prevention and control, preventing, detecting and responding to public health threats at points of entry, contact tracing and follow-up, among others, was the College of Health Sciences and its partners. I thank Makere University for supporting the Ministry of Health interventions at all the critical stages. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, in this meeting, in addition to discussing the COVID-19 pandemic in Africa, we'll also tackle other critical topics such as non-communicable diseases and universal health coverage. The one moral we can learn from the COVID-19 pandemic is that a poorly managed or overlooked disease outbreak in one corner of the world can quickly spread into a global pandemic with devastating effects due to differences in climatic and genetic factors. He 
It is therefore more important than ever that improving access to primary health care, especially in low and middle income countries, will lessen the economic burden of treating preventable diseases by citizens. This will in turn unlock the benefits that come with improved quality of life, such as reduced donor support to health-related challenges. This meeting is therefore a good platform to advocate for actionable global solidarity in resourcing and strengthening health systems for the achievement of universal health coverage and currently equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines. With more than 50% of Uganda's population below the age of 15 years, a high population growth rate of 3%, and a fertility rate of 5.4%, the cost of funding universal health coverage is bound to grow exponentially as more of these young men and women reach child-bearing age. As I conclude, Your Excellency, allow me to thank all our guests for coming, to thank Mama and Minister for Education in particular, for hosting us, and for all the preparations in hosting this World Health Summit. There is no better time than the present time for us to be having these discussions. I thank you. It is now my honor and pleasure to invite the First Lady and Minister for Education to make her remarks. Mama, you're welcome. Thank you, Jane. The President of the Republic of Uganda, the Director General of the World Health Organization, Bacho, Honorable Members, Honorable Ministers of Health, gathered here and online, the President of M8 Alliance, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Good evening to you all. And mine was to really welcome you to Uganda and to this meeting. And I believe it is right to start by thanking God who has made it possible for this event to happen in this time and season in spite of the global challenges we face as a human family. Thank you, Mr. President, for making the time to participate in this meeting this evening and for all the support that has made it possible for us to host this important summit. I want to congratulate Makerere University College of Health Sciences for bringing the World Health Summit regional meeting to Uganda and to Africa, I'm told, for the first time. The National Organizing Committee, too, deserves salutations for making adequate preparations for this event to happen. I'm cognizant of the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic has posed serious organizational and logistical challenges to this meeting before, but we thank God that we are finally here to witness this occasion, both physically and virtually, despite the continuing disruptions occasioned by the pandemic. We applaud the frontline health workers all over the world, first respondents from both the public and private sectors who have been working tirelessly to bring this situation not only under control, but hopefully to an end. We are too aware of the toll this pandemic has had on frontline health workers. The World Health Organization estimates of May 2021 say that uh, there were 115,000 
health workers that had died from COVID-19 since the beginning of this pandemic. These health workers succumbed to COVID-19 while trying to save someone else's life. They are now heroes and heroines of our time in this fight against COVID-19. And they have put a challenge to us who are still alive today to play our own part and do our best to save someone else's life as we strive to keep safe by providing the example you would like to see. With that said, let us not lose hope though, because we know that this pandemic shall surely pass away also. To make this monumental achievement, we shall need each one of us to play their part within their domain of responsibility, be it in one's own home or community or workplace or nation and at the global stage. It is with this hope and assurance that on behalf of the government of Uganda, we are thankful to Makerere University for the exemplary leadership in searching for solutions to the health challenges. Therefore, we in the Ministry of Education and Sports here in Uganda, we see this regional meeting as a demonstration of commitment from each participant to fulfilling Makerere University's third strategic pillar of knowledge transfer partnership and networking. By bringing the World Health Summit to Uganda, you are not only enabling leading experts in health from 30 member institutions of the M8 Alliance, but also national ac uh, academies of medicine and science from 130 countries to share their knowledge, practices, and experiences on how we can fast track national development through improved health services delivery. I am glad to note that Makere University is signing a memorandum of understanding to collaborate with one of the leading medical schools in Germany. And I urge you to implement the objectives of this MOU to generate benefits to both universities and your respective countries, especially technology transfer and research in health sciences. Key to this achievement of convening the World Health Summit is exploring ways on how we can better train our health workers. I'm therefore pleased to note that the meeting has devoted one of the sessions to discussing medical education and training, particularly the role of postgraduate training in quality improvement of care besides the leadership training offered to medical students and young physicians. As a pre-conference event, which I understand took place on the 26th of June. With this COVID-19 pandemic, we have a good example of the kind of challenges that may seem as a once in a lifetime problem, but they do indeed remind all of us that we are one human family on planet Earth. And the sooner we can work together to find lasting solutions to our problems, the better for all of us. That may entail harnessing synergies of public-private partnership to mount effective sustainable responses in education and health service deliveries. Therefore, it is my hope that a summit like this would find time to explore ways that empower us as a human race to start the search process that will continue until those solutions are found. As I conclude, I would like to encourage all participants not to let your guard down, but strictly adhere to the SOPs for prevention of the spread of COVID-19 it is only through prevention that we can lessen the burden on our health care systems and bring this pandemic under control. Finally, I challenge you all 
to be agents of hope and not fear in this challenging time. It is with courage that we shall fight the good fight of faith. I thank all of you who have braved the journey to be here in Uganda in this very difficult time. God bless you all, and I thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mama. Janet Kataham Seven, thank you so much, and thank you. Uh, I now want to invite the following, and uh, they are headed by our Vice Chancellor, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, uh, Professor Charles Sivinjira, and Professor Damalina Kanjako, the Principal, College of Health Science, Professor Agso, please, to come and uh, perform a very important function, and that is signing of the memorandum of understanding between Makere University and Charity University of Medicine, Berlin. Your Excellency, uh, they are now signing the memorandum of understanding between the University of Makere and Charity University of Germany. Berlin. I want to thank you, the Charity University of, of Medicine, Berlin, for being there for for health, and when you're there for health, then you support everyone and there's life. Thank you very much. And we thank this uh, uh, very important cooperation between the College of Health Science, Professor Vinjira, the president, and the support of the vice chancellor, but above all, the Minister of Education and the government of Uganda. Now Professor Iwinjira is going to, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, the Vice Chancellor, is going to have an official exchange with uh, uh, Professor Aksu from the University of Charité Medicine in Berlin. It is now done and uh, there's an official working document and now we are in partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Your Excellency, that function has been very brief. Now, I'm so happy that I'm also this is the minister. Your Excellency, I take this single on an opportunity with happiness to invite Mama uh, Janet Kataham Seven, the Minister of Education, to invite you, Your Excellency, to come and give the opening uh, speech and declaring this summit open. Mama, uh, she has invited thank you, <laughs> Your Excellency. I'm so happy that it's me inviting you. She has invited me, so. <laughs> thank you so much, Your Excellency. The Director General of the World Health Organization, the Honorable Ministers of Education who are here and those who are here digitally, 
the ministers of education, of health, the director, Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the executive president of Siemens, the vice chancellors of universities and the academicians, the country representative of the World Health Organization, the president of the World Health Summit, the international president of the World Health Summit, delegates from the MS Alliance, ministers of Uganda, members of parliament, ladies and gentlemen, both here physically and virtually. I greet you all and congratulate you upon organizing and hosting this World Health Summit regional meeting. I also wish to congratulate the Makerere University administration and staff for the work done to ensure that this World Health Summit regional meeting is hosted for the first time in Africa, particularly in Uganda. Congratulations. I wish to thank uh, the leadership and scientists of Makerere University for quickly mobilizing human and other resources to start developing uh, and the the Uganda Virus Research Institute to start developing a Ugandan COVID-19 vaccine. We have a long history and experience in dealing with such major disease outbreaks, including Ebola. The, this uh, pandemic, as the German professor was saying, has brought out some good efforts like this one here, but also brought out bad things in the world. However, me, I like the bad things. I like, it's bad, but, but somehow it wakes up the Africans. Africans sleep too much. You know my orientation. I have never believed in independence. Ever, for the last 60 years, I've been struggling against that. In the government, when we were outside the government, in the resistance, we were always striving to depend on ourselves. Therefore, this, <laughs> this unfortunate phenomenon where people have vaccines and they say, no, we must first vaccinate our own people. That's unfortunate, but I like it because it wakes you, you Africans. 
Africans are a disgrace to ourselves. Why do you have to depend on, on the outside for everything? Life, you depend on the outside, why? So, even before the, this crisis, I was always struggling with our people. Ebola started here. We are the ones who, who suffered from Ebola. Why would anybody else develop the vaccine not of Ebola, not ourselves? Why? This is a big shame for Africa. And within the government, you know, you know what um, we, are, we are doing. We must develop, and we are developing with our funding, Uganda government funding, a pathogenic industry to make even a business out of our diseases. If we are the ones with the diseases, why don't we make a business out of them? At the same time as we provide the cure. Now, the only thing I want from outside, if the vaccines come, good. If they come, we shall welcome them. But more importantly, we are developing our own vaccine. And I've been following every day what our people are doing. And they, they can do it. They have the, they, they have the knowledge. We have trained you. Many of you are highly educated. Ugandans started education long ago, modern education. The only little issue I would like to ask from our German friends and other friends, if they want to help, are sometimes the raw materials. The raw materials for this vaccine. Because of the economies of scale, sometimes it is not economic to produce every, every raw material, every input. It is sometimes cheaper and, and quicker to get some of the inputs from outside. So give us those inputs. But my people have been getting problems. It seems some people don't want Africa to stand up. So I'm glad you have this organization. You discuss, frankly, let, let's get the, the support of, 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 we shall pay. We don't want to, any, we don't, for me, I don't want any, any donation. No, I will pay. But if I want my people, for instance, I will give you one example. My people, my people wanted uh, cells to grow the virus here. These cells apparently originally came from the African green monkey. Apparently, it has got the green monkey has got some cells which are good for growing the virus. So, clever outsiders took the cells and multiplied them. So when I quarreled with my people, said, you people, how can you sit here as, as if you are imbeciles? That we are dying, we are waiting for foreigners to come and save us. We shall die until the foreigners come to save us. What sort of people are, are, are you? And you are trained. It is the orientation. It is a slave mentality. My people now started now get, trying to get the sales now. There are no way in Africa. You can imagine in the whole of Africa, there were no these green monkey cells, which originally came from Africa. 
And my people started looking here, looking there, looking there. They, a lot of, of struggle. And some were, were wondering, you Africa, why do, why do you want the series for? You stay there and wait for other people to make the vaccines. I said, no. We must get, get them. If we don't get them from the ones we think are friends, we shall find another way of getting them. And we've got, we got them. So my people now are moving. But they need some other raw materials. Even this morning I was checking with them. Please, if you really want to help Africa, get us those raw materials. We shall pay. I don't want any help from anybody. I will pay. I will pay for the vaccine if it is already done. I will pay for the raw materials. And in the next one and a half years, we shall be standing up in all these areas. We shall be having our own vaccine. We shall be having, uh, we already have our own uh, diagnostics. We already have the, um, the therapeutics, the therapeutics. We may help the world. We are moving very well there. The therapeutics. So therefore, for me, there is this prepared speech here where I say I'm happy to see you and so on. But I'm telling you my thinking now. So this selfishness in the world is bad, but it's good. I like it because it wakes up Africans. It wakes up Africans. It's a shame that the whole of the African continent is just asleep, waiting for to be saved by, by others. If they don't save us, we shall die, like happened with the slave trade. How can this be? Slave trade went on here for 400 years. These idiot chiefs were here just putting on monkey skins and so on, looking like clowns. So therefore, although this is bad, but but, but me, there is a good thing in it, to wake, to wake up the Africans. So I go back to the written speech now. We know, do I have to go on with the speech or I end here? <laughs> have I not finished? Let me read what they have written here, just in case I forget something. We know that the ultimate solution to COVID-19 lies in vaccinating all our people. But even the vaccination, when you vaccinate, there's a new variant. I, I, I think you have to discuss this, because when you vaccinate, there's a new variant, which is now, uh, you, you, you tell me what, how you, have, you handle that uh, mutation of the virus. The government, with the help of the African Union and other partners, will fast track the acquisition of sufficient doses of vaccines to cover the entire population alongside efforts to develop our own vaccine. That one is the, is the one I am really uh, working on. We are continuing to talk with India the USA for the Johnson Johnson vaccine, China, and Cuba. The importance of medical research cannot be overemphasized. Progress in medicine depends largely on the work of medical research. Research into the causes and treatments of illnesses is perhaps the most important weapon in the fight against uh, disease. As you saw in the new government, I transferred that ministry to my office. 
the Minister of Science and Innovation, because I'm, I, I was not happy with the red tape by those who were involved, we would have moved, we would be very far on the vaccine if we had not wasted our time. Recycling to traditional medicine is particularly important in Africa in making good use of our naturally and richly endowed environment. This part of our world has got all the biodiversity. And, and since, since ancient times, those people who are sitting with you, my guests from outside, these Ugandan scientists, many of them are, are from the countryside. And in the countryside, the, our people have some more indigenous medicines. Now what is happening is that because these people get scientific knowledge through education, they then go back, say, oh, but our people, we are doing this. What was in it? And uh, you would be surprised about the potential there. The potential is, is, is quite big. Now there, we need to agree on the patenting, the patenting, because of course this is not the, the, the one who brings the indigenous knowledge and, and uh, makes it available to the wider society, to the wider world, does something, but that knowledge is not his, it is, it is, uh, it is the community knowledge. So how, 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 how do you handle this in terms of p patenting? So the countries in Africa, Asia and Latin America use traditional medicine to help meet some of their primary health needs. In Africa, up to 80% of the population uses traditional medicines for primary health care. The age-old cures that kept our forefathers disease-free must be given enough attention so that we improve on them and preserve their use. The government remains committed to funding research and innovations by our scientists, especially those in the universities. We have demonstrated this by earmarking a number of 30 billion shillings. This is, an, this is small. We shall increase it. We shall increase it. to Makerere University Research and Innovation Fund for, this is for, for Makerere alone, I think. However, I challenge Makerere not only publish, but translate research into products that spur our industrial development and catalyze pharmaceutical industrialization to stop the massive dependence on outside pharmaceuticals. We want tangible results, and our ordinary Ugandans have hope in our scientists to come up with solutions for different ailments like cancer and many other diseases. With the therapeutics, one of our products has been tried among some patients, and most of them have fully recovered while the others are still on treatment. That, that's for one. For, for one, 
we target to reach 124 patients before we are sure that this medicine treats COVID-19 patients. I salute the few outsiders that helped us. I therefore appeal to our regional scientists to work together and put up a united front. Making a vaccine involves nine or eight phases. If, if WHO allows you to skip one phase, our researchers are now entering stage five. We hope to get to stage eight by November 2021. I can assure you that by the end of 2021, we shall no longer be waiting for outsiders to rescue us from mass death. The role of science and innovation is recognized from the pre-industrial and other stages of the Industrial Revolution between 1750 and 1830, and is still key to the fourth Industrial Revolution today. There is strong evidence indicating that all the developed nations we see today came to be what they are because they invested in science and research and stimulated their population to be more innovative, build enterprises and industries to produce goods, services, and solutions to address societal ch challenges. A scan of the developed world indicates that science, technology, innovation, and research enabled economies to increase productivity, reduce costs, improve product quality, and gain a competitive advantage. While civilization started in Africa, the biggest problem was that it was never institutionalized and regulated. It remained an individual, tribes, steel trade, skilled trade. For example, we have skilled people in Uganda called Abahesi Blacksmith. This is a whole industry that has not been developed, mineralogy, gemology, the science of dealing with gemstones, as we continue exporting our minerals in raw form. This may also explain why we have missed the first, second, and third industrial revolutions. As Marimu Nyerere said, Africa needs to run while others walk if we are to catch up. Some parts of the world are on the verge of the fourth industrial revolution, while many parts of Africa have not entered the first industrial revolution. As we usher in the fourth industrial revolution, where the physical, biological, digital technologies are converging, we are seeing technologies like artificial intelligence, robotics, biotechnologies, ETC. These technologies are efficient and can innovatively be used to address societal challenges. For example, scientists have used modern biotechnology to come up with plant varieties that are resistant to drought, pests, and disease, and rich in nutrients through biofortification. Technology and innovation are very dynamic, and developing countries cannot afford to lag behind or to go through the whole revolution cycles to the fourth industrial revolution technologies. This can only be possible by establishing strategic partnerships with the advanced countries like Japan. All the countries that have transformed their economies in record time have done so through deliberate and focused strategic partnerships, such as Japan uh, working with the USA, China and Korea have all leveraged strategic partnerships and technology transfer in the field of science, technology, innovation, and research. Finally, I wish to assure everybody that we are optimistic and we shall overcome this challenge of COVID-19. As I have mentioned several times, our scientists, doctors, researchers, innovators, ETC, will move Africa to another level scientifically. 
it is now my honor to declare the World Health Summit uh, Regional Meeting in Uganda officially open. I wish you all a good stay and fruitful proceedings. I, I strongly urge you to continue observing the COVID-19 standard op operating procedures. Thank you very much. God bless you. Uh, please again, let's join our hands and thank His Excellency the President who has made it happen for us for this conference. Your Excellency, we thank you very much for being a good father and more specifically looking at issues of health which has got to keep your people live and kicking. The co-host of this conference is Makeri University of the Government of Uganda. And now, as we want to move into the high-level discussion, I take this opportunity to invite the co-host, that is the Vice-Chancellor of Makere University, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, to come and be the chair of this session and give a brief as well. And this is going to be a bilateral engagement between Dr. Tedros, uh, from Geneva and His Excellency, the President. And in this session, uh, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, the Vice Chancellor, will be supported by Professor Iwinjira, the International President of the World Health Summit, and Dr. Damali Nakanjako, the Principal of the College of Health Science. Now I invite Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, the Vice Chancellor of Makere University. Professor Barnabas. Your Excellency, the President of Uganda and visitor of Makere University. The First Lady and our Minister of Education, Honorable Ministers, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, all participants, the Director General of World Health Organization, ladies and gentlemen, I have been requested to chair this session where Your Excellency and Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus are going to dialogue on the issue of vaccine inequity. When I was listening to the Director General, he was expressing concern about the, what some people have called vaccine apartheid. But Your Excellency, you are saying it is good because it is waking us up. And on that note, Your Excellency, before I invite Dr. Tedros to start us off, let me just make a comment about this issue of waking us up. Two years ago, you came to Makere University to inspect an exhibition, agriculture exhibition it was. And you say, finally you seem to be waking up. Indeed, Your Excellency, because of your persistent encouragement and criticism, Mackay University woke up. COVID-19 specifically showed how Mackay University has woken up. And you have referred to some of that. With the first injection of the 30 billion shillings, the innovations coming out of Makerere surprised even me. And I'm saying, where were we all this time? We have contributed tremendously to looking for solutions for COVID-19, but also other diseases. As you are aware, Your Excellency, we have started now the manufacture of our own vaccine, anti-tick vaccine to solve a problem which has been bothering our farmers for a long time. We are beginning, we are going to begin producing the uh, diagnostics that you talked about. Again, with the support from the government, the preside, which you set up. With the preside support, 
Makerere's university's research infrastructure has been modernized in the last one year. We now have labs which are at par with any lab anywhere in the world. And we actually now have no excuse why we must not excel. And as you are aware, Your Excellency, Makerere University has a new strategic plan. We have a vibrant council which is pushing us to move science to the next level, to begin not just, as you have said, not just publishing, but actually coming up with products. And with the support of council, with your visionary support, with the support of our minister, and we want to thank you, Your Excellency, for reappointing our minister. She is very passionate about Makerere. She is passionate about higher education. With her support, we are now on the move. We want to pledge and assure you, Your Excellency, that the money given to us will be put to the best use to ensure that we support your government in moving this country out of poverty and out of marginalization. That we can assure you, Your Excellency. Now, I think the participants are very eager to listen to both you and the Dr. Tedros on this issue of vaccine apartheid, if I can use the word which I've been seeing all the time. You have your points on one side that it is a good thing, and the Dr. Tedros say, no, this is not fair. So, may I now take this opportunity to invite you, Dr. Tedros, to start us off with this discussion on vaccine apartheid. What is happening and what can we do? Dr. Tedros. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Barnabas. Um, on the um, uh, vaccine, of course, as you rightly said, uh, some people call it vaccine apartheid, others call it vaccine nationalism. Uh, but as I said in my speech, um, it's very clear that there is vaccine inequity. Uh, and that's causing a two-track pandemic because some countries have better access to vaccines and their situation is getting better. Others, low-income countries who don't have access to vaccines, uh, their situation is deteriorating. Uh, so I, I uh, fully agree with His Excellency the President when he says let's use this as a wake-up call. And in my speech also I said Africa should not really de depend on others uh, for essential things like vaccines, not only COVID vaccines, but even uh, other vaccines too. So we need uh, to invest um, in Africa, and and it can be done. And I fully agree also, I, I have seen the potential when I visited uh, Uganda Virus Research Institute in June 2019. Uh, I have seen many good things that really can uh, help Uganda and can help uh, Africa to um, do better in, um, uh, you know, uh, identifying, starting from testing uh, viruses and developing uh, the uh, tools uh, to fight them. When I visited um, uh, the uh, Virus Institute, uh, my attention was on Ebola. And uh, uh, as you know, Uganda Virus Research Institute actually has contributed a lot uh, for, for Ebola. Uh, as you know, um, when we had the pandemic in DRC, um, this was the Ebola epidemic in, in DRC, North uh, Kivu. Uh, I have been to the outbreak area to Butembo, uh, to Katwa and, and other uh, places. And the experience that was gained in Uganda actually helped. And that's why 
the virus didn't go out of control like it did in Western Africa in 2014. Because of the knowledge that we gained, Uganda also contributed, we fought better um, in, in, in the RC. Um, of course, um, uh, you know, um, that, that was the, the um, uh, reason that gives you uh, the hope that Africa can do and can can do its 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 share and can be um, you know uh, can address its problems than depend on on others. So I agree on that, uh, and that's why we are helping countries now in our continent, as you also said, Your Excellency, the President, in connecting them with um, uh, the developers and with uh, manufacturers to to work with African countries uh, to start the development of uh, uh, vaccines. Uh, we have a hub now in WHO and we're trying to connect um, Africa with, with uh, uh, others so they can do it as a, as a joint venture. Uh, so that's um, an investment that we will continue from WHO side uh, to, to, to help. So it can have impact in the medium term, and it can have impact in, in the long term. But when we talk about investment in vaccines, I also believe that it has to be part of the bigger vision of a country in manufacturing industry. Uh, that's part of a bigger um, vision, as your excellency says, of a national development. Because um, you know, from the capacity that we have now, we may not be able to do more than fill and finish. But if we're going to do beyond, we need to have investment in mm -hmm. chemical industries, big industries that can produce active ingredients. And that can help to move Africa not only to do fill and finish, but beyond, beyond. So that's why I'm saying it has to be part of a bigger vision, a national development, a manufacturing industry, industrial zones, chemical industries that can then help with vaccines or other uh, pharmaceutical uh, uh, pro pro products. But for the immediate, since that's for the medium and long term, for the immediate, since it takes to develop uh, vaccines, to fight this pandemic, uh, we need uh, to have you know, we need the world should share the vaccines that uh, from the vaccines that we have, uh, because unless we share now, there will be more cases and and more deaths, and the market is failing. You say you can buy your excellency uh, vaccines, and I I'm happy you said that. But the problem now is, even if you have money, you cannot buy vaccines because the vaccines is already uh, being hoarded by those who can pay more. So in the short term, we have to address the market failure. And the market failure can be addressed by sharing. Of course, then at the same time, start investing for the medium and long term. So that's what we're proposing from WHO side. We need to have to share now to end this pandemic as soon as possible then we can open up the world together, but at the same time, invest in our future. But I fully agree with you, Your Excellency, Africa has a lot of potential, and this should be a wake-up call, and we, we have to invest, and I fully agree with you. And thank you so much, by the way, to have this platform with you. Uh, I um, had the opportunity uh, to... Um, you know, join you in many platforms when I was foreign minister of my country, uh, and this is a great opportunity to to uh, meet you. And I know the consistency and the passion, the commitment uh, you have, uh, you know, in making Africa address uh, its own uh, problems. And that's the right mindset. It has to start from really improving our, our mindset. And that's what I know you have been doing for many years since from my own experience. Thank you so much. And back to you, Professor Barnabas. Uh, thank you very much, Director General.
Your Excellency, I was uh, one time very angry, and I'm sure very many Africans were very angry. When some very powerful person was trying to blame Dr. Tedros for the spread of COVID-19. We said, Are you sure? But thank you very much for standing firm, Dr. Tedros. We are proud of you. <laughs> Your Excellency, I think now you could respond to what Dr. Tedros said and maybe encourage us even more to research into these problems. Yes. Of course, in the short run, we shall see who can sell us the vaccine. The, because, because this is just uh, immediate to fire brigade now. Uh, but I can assure you, for Uganda, in one year, one and a half, we shall never again be in such a situation. If we can buy from some people, if they want to sell, if they agree, because they are for, the, the foreigners have failed the test. The foreigners, professor from Germany, I'm telling you that the foreigners have failed two tests, according to my assessment. Number one, they have failed my tribal test. Because in my tribe, there is no way you can say that because I have a problem, I don't care about my brother who also have the same problem. No way. In my tribe, it can never happen. Yes, I have a problem, but if my brother has, has a problem, I will share the ritual I have with him to solve my problem, but also address his. This is my tribal code. And this was tested when the, when the corona was starting. Because here in East Africa, we had the problem of sanitizers. Ugandans drink a certain strong gene from bananas called waraji. It's a strong gene they normally poison themselves with it. And they, they, they like it. But that gene, if you distill it more, it produces a very good sanitizer. So when the, when the, when the crisis started, only Uganda was producing sanitizers in East Africa. So some of my people said, we should not exp allow East Africa to, buy, to, uh, to import the sanitizer because we need it. I said, no. In my tribe, that's not allowed. What you should do, you can say you keep like 40% for yourselves, but let 60% be shared by the East Africans. That was my tribal, my tribal constitution. I cannot, so the foreigners have failed. Zero, zero marks on the tribal, on my tribal code. But they have also failed on the Christian, Christian, you remember I, I had, I had a rumor that there were Christians in the world. That's what we hear. We hear that there are Christians in America, there are Christians in Europe, there are Christians. Uh, these people have failed on the Christian test. So, uh, so we are, we are going to, to look for the vaccine for the short run, but also they have failed on the, on the, on the, on the, on the test of strategy. Because we now know that they don't care about us. Thank you very much. Yes, some of us may die, but our children will now know. 
that these are not people to, to depend on. So, three failures, tribal, Christian, strategic. But if they can repent, quickly, 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 repent and say, please, please, the vaccines are here. Find a way of covering up. So, that, oh, say, oh, we didn't know they, they, were, they were busy, they were occupied. We can see how to cover them up. The, I am told uh, the Cuban vaccine has been validated by the WHO, by Mr. Dr. Tedros. One of my people told me. So if the Cuban vaccine has been validated, oh, then uh, of the Cubans are part of our group. They are, they, they are part of the Africans. So uh, then we shall see. We shall see which of these people want to redeem themselves. Because this is a big shame on them. They need redemption. But this is the last, as far as Uganda is concerned, this is the, the last time we shall be in this type of situation. We shall develop our own capacity. Uh, and God also, God is also on the side of the unlucky. We may also get other solutions because we seem to be moving quite, quite well on the therapeutic. So that's what I would like to say. Yes, in the short run, if they can, good. But they haven't. Because if, if we had vaccinated, we wouldn't get this second wave. Because for us, we had controlled the first wave. Only 300 people died in the, in the first wave in one and a half years. Only 300 people. Now, I think we have gone to 800, a total of 800 now, because of, uh, of, 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 of missing out on, on, on the vaccine. So. We are ready, but we have learned. Certain, of course, for me, I knew the only thing is to convince all these people here that you people, Saba Gamba. Saba Gamba in Germany, is, did, did, did I not tell you? Did, did I not tell you that you should depend on yourselves? That, that's really, uh, really the issue. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you can allow me to go with the, to take the first lady. Have I not finished my work? Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. We, the M8 Alliance, uh, we very much uh, feel concerned about this uh, vaccine inequity and we feel this is the time to tell the whole world that we do not support this and we request that equity should be considered. I would like to invite the president of the M8 Alliance to mention uh, what we plan to do in order to come up with the Kampala Declaration on Vaccine Iniquity. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for this opportunity. Your Excellency, um, you really made a very relevant point with your three failures, um, which were evident in many parts of the world. It's a question of solidarity, which you call tribal. It's a question of belief, which you call Christian. In, and most importantly, it's a question of a good brain, which you call strategic. And you are quite right, the world failed. But it also tells us a lesson, the exact lesson which you are alluding to. We have to be strong individually and regionally, but we also have to work together globally. 
And with that, I would like to stimulate that the M8 Alliance and also the Ugandan government represented by yourself and maybe Dr. Tetros by the WHO and my co-president Charles Iwingira that we push for a Kampala declaration addressing exactly these issues and asking for the world to to take the lesson from, from these events. I'm optimistic that we can learn. I'm not so optimistic that it will not happen again because people have to learn over and over. But I think it's our responsibility to use this very special location and, and these very high-ranking political and, and strategic people to send a signal to the world as a um, Kampala declaration asking for means to address the inequity right now. And with a view also into the future, providing every local region and nation with the means to address future threats. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, the president of the MH Alliance. Dr. Tedros in Geneva, I think uh, Dr. Barnabas had to. Let, let's, let's say, yeah. It seems uh, Dr. Tedros uh, could have a rejoinder to His Excellency. Uh, you could give your rejoinder, and that would conclude now that debate on the vaccine apartheid. Please unmute uh, Dr. Tedros. Uh. Uh, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think I have uh, taken a lot of uh, time today and such a great, a great honor. And I would like again uh, to thank uh, Uganda for uh, hosting this uh, event and for His Excellency the President. Uh, I mean, to His Excellency the President for his leadership. Um, one thing I would like to say is that I fully agree uh, with uh, the President of the World Health Summit's recommendation that's to have uh, a declaration uh, of the meeting uh, and would be happy to support in, in any way uh, possible. As you may know, I am the patron of the World Health Summit and uh, I, I, fully, I fully concur. And the declaration can help us also in the October uh, meeting of the World Health Summit in, in Berlin. And thank you also to Germany uh, for, uh, you know, helping in having this regional, first ever uh, regional meeting in, in Uganda. Uh, vielen Dank, uh, uh, Your Excellency Ambassador. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, Your Excellency, we must uh, I must report to Your Excellency that uh, Macquarie University receives a lot of support from the World Health Organization. They have actually chosen our College of Health Sciences as one of the focal research uh, areas uh, or partners of the World Health Organization in Africa. So we want to thank the World Health Organization very much. We are also excited about the Memorandum of Understanding we have signed with the Charité. Charité is, the, as has been reported, one of the leading global uh, schools of medicine and the partnering with the, uh, what we remain the top school of tropical medicine in the world. For the last 60 years, we have been recognized as the top school of tropical medicine in the world. And the, now partnering with the, a top school of medicine from the North Pole, I think is a good thing that we have tropical medicine and then we have the medicine from the other side so that we can learn from each other. As the, the president of WMA Alliance has said, this is a small 
continent. It is a small planet where people should collaborate and uh, uh, with collaboration we are sure uh, sharing knowledge uh, between uh, the different regions of the world we can solve the problems of the world. But uh, I must say once again, Your Excellency, that uh, Makere University is uh, very grateful for your support. Uh, the, your support to the scientists and particularly to the professors. I have been accounting and since you enhance the salaries, I have not seen a Makere professor go to the outside world. Actually now some are beginning to come back, those who had left. This has created the stability that now you see innovations coming out of the university all the time. Because it is they who supervise the young scientists. And through that support again, Mackay University has been able to develop a formidable force of scientists. And uh, we, we can pledge, Your Excellency, that uh, we will rally to your call to look for local solutions to our problems. And even now begin exporting knowledge. Uh, Professor Nakanjako talked about ne Nevarpin. Sometimes we are actually producing solutions for the world, but I don't know why it never comes out too strongly that it, this has come out of Uganda. Because that Nevarpin has saved the whole world. It is used all over the world. It was our invention here at Makere University. But we, are, we will continue doing this uh, work with your support. We will continue looking for solutions. We thank you for, the, for your resilience as far as Kira Motors was concerned. Because a lot of people had doubts, but see where we are going. Yeah. Kira Motors, the banana project, I think is moving. And now that we are able to produce uh, peptides and ad other diagnostics, we used to export our samples, students, PhD and master students used to export. One time, Macquarie University had to pay $100,000 for a sample to be tested in Europe. Now, because of this support through Preside, we are able to make those peptides here ourselves. So that is going to save our country a lot of money, a lot of money. But that is because of your support. If it was not there, we would be there, and as you say, to continue with our sleep. But uh, because of that support, the scientists have actually woken up. Every day we are launching new innovations. Actually, the next time you come to visit us, I'm sure you'll be pleasantly surprised. Where is all this coming from? A lot of innovations in all areas, in agriculture, in health, in uh, vet medicine, in uh, education, in uh, the humanities, everywhere. We are launching new innovations, and they are all innovations that can actually transform our country. So we are really, indeed, very, very grateful. So that brings us to the end of this uh, uh, debate between uh, Your Excellency and Dr. Tedros. And uh, I now invite the MC to give some closing whatever directions. Uh, thank you very much, um, the Vice Chancellor. Now, I want to invite the performing arts to lead us in this, yeah. in, with, the, with the anthems right now. Uh, you see, uh, Dr. Milton, shall we now rise up and perform?
Performing Arts, and we want to thank you so much, Your Excellency, for giving us this precious time. And uh, we want to thank our exhibitors, but also Professor Ivy Njira for a great job done to bring us together this evening to make this happen. We thank Mama Janet Kataham Seveni, and we thank all our funders, Emirate Alliance, IPFM, the Government of Uganda, Macquarie University Council. FDFL, Roshi, Viatris, German Healthcare, and World Health Organization. Your Excellency, I've been Dr. Mohamed Musoke Chegundu, Symbiotic Relations. That actually brought the 15 million deals to the professors. We want to thank you again, always, and always be back to you for support. We know you support research. We want to thank everyone who is here, the organizing committee. Your Excellencies, we are very happy. And we've been happy to have the ministers who flew in here purposely for this. We now uh, very soon are going to invite you for dinner. And the international president will be coming here for a minute to have a special invitation to you all. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor, for enabling this. And thank you. Thank you all. like to invite you to a dinner which is prepared on the other side down the tents please you are all most welcome thank you